Good evening. Welcome to Making the Case. I'm Sharon Reed in for Yodit Tawalde. Tonight we begin with two big developments, both from the Department of Justice. They launched an investigation into the city of Phoenix and the Phoenix Police Department. Today's announcement is the third such civil rights investigation into a police agency brought by the Justice Department this year, Merrick Garland's Justice Department. The Attorney General says the probe will examine several areas. And it will consider several issues. First, whether the Phoenix Police Department uses excessive force in violation of the Fourth Amendment. Second, whether the Phoenix Police Department engages in discriminatory policing practices that violate the Constitution and federal law. Third, whether the department violates the First Amendment by retaliating against individuals who are engaged in protected expressive activities. Now, the Justice Department has opened similar investigations into police departments in Minneapolis and Louisville, where George Floyd and Breonna Taylor died at the hands of police. Now it comes as Associated Press reports new developments in the Justice Department's civil rights investigation into the killing of Ronald Green by Louisiana State Troopers in May 2019. They report that investigation has now expanded beyond the troopers who actually killed Mr. Green to include top brass now who were involved in the cover-up of his death. Shroud of Secrecy, as you might recall, has surrounded this case from the beginning and Mr. Green's family was originally told he died in a car accident. The body cam footage was not publicly released, but finally, thank goodness, it was leaked by the Associated Press earlier this year. With me tonight to talk about Ronald Green is family attorney Ron Haley. Um, thanks so much, uh, attorney Haley, for joining us tonight. Um, I think so many of us remember when the AP leaked that footage. It was just incredible. It was difficult, horror to watch it. But I felt responsible to sit and drink it in. It was that ridiculous. I want to know why you believe, after so much secrecy, the decision was made to extend the focus into the obvious, the DOJ investigation now including top brass. Well, I think you said it and you hit the, the nail right on the head. It's the obvious. It's very obvious that the troopers that responded to the call to Ronald Green that night killed and murdered Ronald Green. The whole country, the whole world saw that video. Uh, the question now is who participated in the cover-up? Everyone knows what happened that fateful night of May 10th, 2019. We saw a man beg and plead for his life, calling his aggressors and offenders, his brother, die at the hands of the police. What I want to know is what happened on May 11th, 2019 until today's date who participated in the cover-up, who was responsible. Mm -hmm. And so we want everyone to be held accountable. We want those not just who put their physical hands on Ronald Green, but those who had their hands on the tape and decided to do nothing. Those who had their hands on the tape and decided to suppress evidence. Those who had their hands on the evidence and decided not to put the, that evidence uh, forth to the district attorney's office. That's what we want to know. And I'm very happy uh, that this investigation is is going to extend beyond what just happened on May 10th, 2019. Yeah, I got to tell you, Attorney Haley, you spoke of the day after, right? May 11th. I want to know about May 9th. I mean, here we are watching what appears to have been a cover-up that was so well-oiled. They were so good at this. It does, uh, well, it's eerie to think about what else. They may have been involved here in the state of Louisiana. It seemed clear that things like this happen. Um, one of the specifics that the DOJ is, is looking into, the FBI too, why the state police did not provide proper uh, police reports or any police reports, the state medical examiner's office, so they could perform a proper autopsy on Mr. Green. Um, as we said, the cover-up started from the beginning, uh, but did the ME ask enough questions? Well, I, I think Things happened definitely before uh, May 10th, and I want to educate our viewers. I want to take you back to February of 2019 with an individual by the name of Antonio, by the name of Antonio Harris, who was hit over the head uh, mm -hmm. by state troopers, a trooper by the name of Jacob Brown, who was arrested for that with a flashlight. Very similar to what happened to Ronald Green on May 10th, 2019, when he was hit over the head with a flashlight by Trooper Hollingsworth. 
Fast forward just three weeks later, a gentleman by the name of Aaron Bowman was cracked over the head again by Jacob Brown uh, with a flashlight. So this seems to be par for the course for the Louisiana State Police, mm -hmm. in particular in that Monroe area of Louisiana. And so it's it, it's it's eerie, you know, and you, the word eerie is correct. What yeah. was eerie to me yeah. was at the end of the video, there was no regard for Ronald's death. No. It was, look, we're going to dap each other off and say, good job. Nobody was concerned they just killed a man. So that makes you wonder, is he the first? Was he the last? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we said, just haunting so many of us. Uh, but again, the responsibility to really watch this. Um, one of the other major issues, um, the case um, is focusing in on the Justice Department, the body cam footage, which of course was everything, right? Once we got a look at that, because the family was kept in the dark, as you know, for years. Um, so talk specifically about how the body cam footage plays into this federal investigation. Well, I think it's a central part to the investigation. Listen, for the excessive force, use of force investigation, I think it's obvious. I think to anybody that is objective in looking at this, that what happened to Ronald Green uh, was a crime, it was immoral, it was a sin, that they had no right to beat, drag, degrade, and kill him. That part is, is easy, okay, to understand. However, what happened to the body cam subsequent to that is where the waters get a little bit murky where it gets gray because what I'm having trouble to digest, the family has trouble to digest. I think many of the viewers who've seen this have trouble to have trouble to digest is this. Why is something that is so obvious have taken so long to get to the doorsteps of transparency and accountability? Because I know if I saw that and I'm a prosecutor, those cops are going before the grand jury as soon as I could get them there. However, for whatever reason, the buck was passed to someone else or a blind eye was turned. But to me, that's just splitting hairs. Well, as we said, it's a story that we want to keep following because this is uh, so many of us couldn't imagine how this could be shrouded in secrecy. Even when the country learned about it, um, there was still this um, tight lipped close-knit, um, good old boys is what it seemed like down there in Louisiana. Ron Haley, Green family attorney, thanks so much for coming on the show. We do appreciate you. You know, there's the horror of seeing the act, and then there's the horror of listening to a mother, her pain, her anger. It was an emotional interview. Ronald Green's mother, Mona Harden, spoke with Yodit about her hope for justice and what she wants to see happen in this case. Let's listen to what she had to say. What do, you, what do you want to see come out of today's leaking of the body cam video? I want to hold those officers accountable. You know, I, I want to yes. see, I, I, when I first heard of Chris Harnsworth's death, I, I didn't believe he died. I thought it was a cover-up because he died one day and was buried with high accolades on the third day. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you explain that? How do you explain that? Uh, but moving forward, there are six other officers that are implicated in, in, in our case. And it doesn't even stop there. They should all be, I hate that word, held accountable uh, for murder, for, for aiding and abetting. Whichever way you want to paint this picture, my son was murdered. And everyone who knows of this yes. film, this footage, the body and dash cam, these politicians, all these people in high offices that we met last uh, uh, September, I'm sorry, all of them are part of this cover-up. And I don't see it any other way. Yeah, there's no other way you can paint this picture. It's corruption at the most horrific yeah. evil level. And every one of them, that's what I want to see. Because how do you put your finger on one person without including all the others that help squash it? Well, um, Mother Mona, I really do appreciate you coming on and, and talking about this case. I know how hard that that can be. Um, we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on this and, and any developments. We, we definitely want you to come back and, and give us and the viewers um, an update. Thank you so very much for uh, speaking to me Can I say tonight. one thing? Can I say one thing? 
I, I just want to apologize if I seem angry because I am so, so I'm so I'm beyond the description of anger. But I don't want to show that I'm not staying glued together because we're going to see this through. For my Ronnie, this right here represents my boy. He was a giving spirit. Mother Mona, you can feel, spirit. you can feel all, you can feel whatever you. you want to feel. And and let me just tell you that you have it all the way together. So I, I appreciate the time that you've given us. You continue to fight. We're here to support you. Um, but please understand that we understand that you can say what you want, feel what you want. Um, you have that right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for your platform and your time. Thank you, guys. Of course. Of course. Thank you, Mother Mona.